Hey fellow backpackers and outdoor lovers, Alicia here with Terra Drift. So here's the thing. I've been backpacking for over two decades now, and over that time, I've become more and more of an ultralight backpacker, meaning I prefer to carry as little weight as possible, no matter how long of an excursion I am embarking upon. Why? Well, the reasons are mostly practical. As in, look at me. I'm a tiny human. On a good day, I weigh all of 105 pounds. As in, my body doesn't enjoy adding 30% of my body weight onto my shoulders and then being forced to push all of that weight up a mountain for 10 miles. Just not pleasant. Don't get me wrong, weight never stopped me from backpacking before, but the lighter my pack has gotten over the years, the more excited I've been to spend more time on the trail. So I've been winnowing down my kit for some number of years now in order to see what I could do without and how light of a pack I could get away with. But I finally decided it was time to fully commit and swap out all of my gear for the most ultralight backpacking kit I could find and see if it made for a better backpacking experience or a more miserable one. So let's dive in, shall we? I'm going to take some of the most ultralight gear on the market on a weekend backpacking trip, and then we're going to come back here, break it down, and tell you what passed and what failed on the trail. So let's get out there, shall we? Okay, we're starting. It's a little drizzly, a little misty. I guess that's good because now I get to test out my new rain jacket. Um, we've got about 10 miles to go today and it's like 1245, so we should probably get moving, shall we? Let's go. Not sure if we mentioned, but it's Thanksgiving, so we're having tofurkey wraps. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah. <laughs> Getting warm going uphill. Oh, the jacket's kept me dry, but now I need to breathe. Pack feels good though. Yeah. Well, we found us a dispersed campsite for the night. Uh, we didn't make it all 10 miles. Uh, we could have, I guess. We still have like a mile and a half to go and it's already getting pretty dark. Um, I have no problem hiking in the dark. Um, we have our headlamps, but we're not entirely positive if there is a um, camp site uh, and how easy it will be to find. Um, and the dark would make it more difficult to find. So we're just going to pitch here, found some little flat spots, and uh, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to put my layer on because we stopped hiking and I don't want to get cold. I have denatured alcohol in a travel contact lens case because <laughs> I forgot to pick up a squeeze bottle before we left. <laughs> it worked quite well though. No leaking. Great repurpose of a, of a single use item. And I'm using stakes, um, tent stakes as my pot rest uh, because frankly you can buy fancy, um, you know, like pot stands to go over an alcohol stove. But this is zero extra weight because I'm already bringing stakes for my tent um, and works fine. So there you go. This is not ultralight, <laughs> but it's Thanksgiving and um, we brought some apple whiskey to go with our um, mold apple cider that we made last night. <laughs> so I'm just going to pull wool in here. And... Uh, Heat up that hot apple cider. Okay. So, how'd you sleep? I mean, as well as can be expected. <laughs> but the sleep pad served me well, and I love this tent, so no complaints there. It's early. I'm tired. I need coffee to be made faster. <laughs> Got my camp shoes on. Ultralight uh, Mayfly equipment. They are very light and they are more functional than they look, actually. I'm, I'm a little surprised. <laughs> Just tighten them up here. Tighten them up here. I'm not saying they're 
They're best suited for wet, mushy ground and soggy leaves. <laughs> but um, I would wear them. Nicer weather, maybe. So I wasn't trying to be this ultra light, but um, I forgot my spoon, which is something I've never forgotten before. Tent poles, tent stakes, an extra pair of socks. Yeah, I've all forgotten. I've forgotten all of those things. Uh, never a spoon. So I got out my pocket knife and I made chopsticks, literal chopsticks. So ingenuity in the outdoors. And I may have just originated the next ultra, ultra light trend. <laughs> You're welcome. How was that oatmeal? Mm. Very, very good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> How was it eating it without a spoon? Um, you know, it was challenging, but I feel really good about my effort. <laughs> and uh, I think this is a technique that I'll use in the future. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like the true test of a pack and its comfort level is when you put it on the next day if you want to die. <laughs> so let's put it on for day two and see how we feel now, like a normal pack. I just watched Josh put on his very heavy pack. Usually you have to, you know, like strategically do a move, like put it up on your knee and like slide in sideways in order to hoist it up because it's so heavy. Um, we're just gonna pick this up like so. Throw it right on there. <laughs> I've never felt so good on day two, <laughs> honestly. I'm pretty sure I've carried heavier day packs. Fantastic. Love it. Chef's kiss. <laughs> no soreness in the shoulders at all. <laughs> Let's get going. There we have it. 18 miles. Elevation gain 2,191 feet. Took us about eight and a half hours total. Average pace of a 26 minute mile. And um, that means average speed of 2.3. I feel pretty great at the end of that uh, with my ultralight kit here. So let's head back to the uh, studio and break down what worked and what didn't. So let's break down each item I took with me and discuss whether or not I would consider packing it again. Let's start with the big three or the big four if you're including a sleeping pad. That includes your tent, backpack, sleeping bag, and sleeping pad. The tent I brought with me was the one from Gossamer Gear. It's one of the most ultralight one person tents on the market. Trust me, I searched. Now it is a tent. If you want to ditch even more weight, you could only carry a tarp or possibly a bivy. But frankly, the thought of spiders crawling on my face keeps me awake at night. And uh, I like to make sure that I will stay dry if it rains. Plus, I like to have a safe space to store all my stuff inside the tent with me. Now, I've reviewed the one in the past and love this tent, so it gets a big thumbs up from me. Like, big time. It's spacious, uh, packs down super light, and reduces a ton of weight by pitching with trekking poles instead of traditional poles. I can wholeheartedly recommend this tent for ultralight adventures. Next up, a backpack. This is the Waymark Gear Co. Evolve 35 liter pack. It has very few bells and whistles, with one notable exception. The straps have load lifters, which I actually really appreciate because a lot of ultralight packs don't, so you're limited to how much you can adjust where the weight sits on your back and how close. There aren't a ton of extra pockets or zippered compartments, and there is no frame, of course, but I might actually prefer the load lifters on this pack to an extra pocket or two. So this pack gets a thumbs up with an asterisk because I would add on a few accessories which are available from Waymark, namely the padded hip belt and a hip belt zippered pocket because it would have been nice to be able to shift some of the weight to my hips and stabilize the load to keep it in place in the middle of my back while I was hiking. But let's talk about sleeping bags or in this case, quilts. I used a 40 degree Revelation Apex quilt from Enlightened Equipment. I chose this quilt because again, it was the lightest synthetic quilt I could find. Why synthetic? Well, yes, I could have cut a few 
few more ounces and gain a smidge more packability by opting for a down quilt, but we're vegan here at Terra Drift, so we don't use down. I also prefer synthetic because when down gets wet, it's effectively useless at insulating. This particular quilt has a foot box that you can cinch and zip up for extra warmth, and it's great for many different temperature ranges from cool to warm. So it gets a thumbs up. The only thing I didn't love about it was the lack of baffles. No stitching means there aren't any cold spots in the quilt, but because the fabric is so delightfully soft and light, it's easy to sort of get tangled. But moving on to sleeping pads. I brought along a Nemo switchback because a closed cell foam pad is a multitasking marvel. They're an absolutely wonderful thing to have for sitting on the cold ground, keeping your food and bowls out of the dirt, and having a comfortable place to lay in the sun during afternoon naps. Not to mention, of course, it's great for boosting insulation from the cold ground, especially when paired with an inflatable pad. So it definitely gets a thumbs up. And while I hope to wean myself off of inflatable pads over time and just take the switch back, I did double up on this trip and layered it underneath the Thermarest Uberlite Neo Air. Partially because of the overnight lows I was expecting, but also because this pad weighs so little. It's the lightest full-length inflatable sleeping pad on the market, and it wasn't any noisier than any other inflatable sleeping pad I've ever used, and it was super comfortable, so it gets a thumbs up too. I also brought along a Big Agnes AXL Air pillow, and while I love so much Big Agnes gear, ah, this pillow gets a thumbs down. It'll do in a pinch, but it's not really very comfortable. There's not much stretch to it, and it's small, so it's very easy for your head to just roll off the side. If it were between this pillow and a stuffed sack full of clothes, I think I'd rather just have a stuffed sack full of clothes. The rain jacket I wore on this trip was also ultra light. It was the Outdoor Research Helium, and what it lacks in features, it makes up for in lack of weight. The Helium may not have hand pockets, but it does have a zippered chest pocket and a very well-designed cinch bungee on the hood. While it's not built for winter conditions or multi-day downpours, most likely, it absolutely gets a thumbs up for any ultralight adventures where you may or may not be expecting some rain. It's so light, there's no reason not to bring it. Next up, my Tokes cook set. The siphon alcohol stove is one of the absolute lightest on the market, but packs some serious punch in the functionality department. As in, it heated up and then made quick work of boiling water for our dinner and drinks. I mean, I may never go back to canister stoves again. Alcohol stoves and the fuel they require are just too dang light, and I love it. And when paired with Tokes titanium pot and mug, it's just all an ultralight beauty. So all together, thumbs up. Though this is best suited for rehydrating meals or cooking for just one or two people. Now I also bring along camp shoes when I go backpacking. Usually my Zero Shoes Z Trail sandals are clipped to the outside of my pack, but while they're light, they're not even close to as light as the Nymph sandals from Mayfly Equipment. I was surprised at how functional a few pieces of thin cord attached to what is essentially a plastic yard sign could actually be. They stayed on my feet when I walked around camp, the sandpaper on the bottom kept me from slipping around too much, and most importantly, they weighed virtually nothing. I don't love how disposable these are, as in they're not recyclable, but if you've been eschewing camp shoes all this time because you didn't want to bring the extra weight, well, these will do the trick nicely. So these get a maybe, because while they do work well, if you prefer a more sustainable approach to backpacking, I would recommend just carrying a few extra ounces for sandals that are gonna last longer and that you're more likely to wear in real life. As for trail fails, I did bring half a toothbrush, classic, right? Which frankly gets a thumbs down. This is too small. <laughs> it's not convenient. <laughs> Honestly, half a toothbrush hardly saves you any weight at all, but does take usability way down. So just don't do it, okay? Pack a whole dang toothbrush. What I do recommend taking is toothpaste tabs. Instead of bringing a travel size bottle of toothpaste, drop a few toothpaste tabs, just enough for the length of your trip, in a tiny zip top or other ultralight container. Easy peasy. Other fails? Freezer bag cooking. I used to do it all the time, but now I hate it. It's wasteful, you're just gonna throw the bag away when you get home. It's probably not healthy, as in freezer bags weren't meant to contain boiling water, and plastic bags are stupid annoying to eat out of. I mean, just don't do it. Bring a dang ultralight bowl and 
feet out of that. As for stuff sacks, I do love water resistant and ultra light varieties like the ones I used from Almonds Right. But stuff sacks are another category of item where you're going to be cutting grams, not ounces, so not the most important thing to update in your gear kit in my opinion. I mean, I've been using those green stuff sacks that I made myself out of upcycled fabric for years and they work just fine. If it ain't broke, as they say. So that's it guys. My ultra, ultra light kit put to the test. Would I carry this kit again? <laughs> Absolutely. With maybe one or two adjustments, but the big stuff, it all performed beautifully. And I didn't feel like I was giving up much of any comfort or functionality compared to say a streamlined traditional backpacking kit. So there you have it, ultra light kits for the win. Do you have other ultralight gear that you're absolutely obsessed with or a brand you think we should test out next time? Love learning about new ultralight brands. Or do you think ultralight backpacking is the most ridiculous thing to be invented since Crocs? Either way, let us know in the comments below. And we'll put links to all of the gear we tested in the description so you can check it out for yourself. You know, if you're ready for ultralight then. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up and hit subscribe. And you know, like follow us on all the socials. You know the ones. We're at Teradrid. And then watch some of these other videos we've created. Some of them about ultralight backpacking. They're all great, all of them. I actually really like this one up here. That one's real good. And then get out there, pack lighter, and wander on.